My name's Angelo, and welcome to We Want Picks. Every single week, we break down full UFC fight cards. We give you our picks, our bets, and our fantasy plays. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our content. And we're also giving away $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets, signs up with one of our five betting partners, and makes a deposit will get $50 from us. Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, however you want it. And this is brought to you by EarnU.io. EarnU.io is the world's first sports and esports prediction game, allowing you to earn crypto risk-free. Check it out now at EarnU.io. Next up. Oh, this, was, and- <laughs> this is an easy one to break down. This was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Easy <laughs> lemon squeeze. Next up. At UFC Vegas 55, we have Chase Hooper taking on Felipe Calares. Chase Hooper is 10-2 and overall, 3-2 and in his last five. He's coming off a very disappointing loss about a year ago. Felipe Calares is 10-3 and overall, 2-3 and in his last five, and he's alternating wins and losses. And Chase Hooper is the physical embodiment, and I'm going to talk as nerdy as possible, a physical embodiment of my biggest pet peeve. He is a grappler with no wrestling. None. He's got oh. very good – oh, you know, I'm sorry. He's a phenomenal – get out of my face. I mean, his singles are the best I've ever – I've, and I've been watching MMA, and I've been I've been wrestling my uh-huh. entire life, Angelo. And there it his, is. His, his single leg takedowns and the way he – he he runs. Okay. Uh, People are gonna think he you're drives serious. through, and the way okay. he does the thing where you because you have it like this, and then you do the thing. Yep. So, <laughs> Chase Hooper, physical embodiment. I hate when you have nasty grapplers that don't use the wrestling. That absolutely drives me nuts. But <clears throat> I'll just never Bless understand you. that. He's very. It was a cough. He's very dangerous on the ground. He's slick on the ground, but they're very flashy type moves. Either way, either way, Chase Hooper has very slick BJJ, but only an 18% takedown accuracy. And he has no get-up game if he ends up getting taken down. His striking is not very good, but it's definitely improving. He's a young prospect that I think was exposed in his last fight against Steven Peterson. I think he just needs a little more time to develop. But Chase Hooper, they're they're giving him... uh, a carbon copy of himself because Felipe Calares is a BJJ black belt. He also doesn't have the best striking. He does have good cardio. He's incredibly tough. He never quits. And thank God he's so tough because if you look at the stats, they tell a very scary story on their feet. Felipe Calares is hit almost five times for every two strikes that he actually lands. His path to victory is also grappling and exactly like Chase, he has a miserable takedown accuracy of 21%. And statistically, these guys are very, very similar. They're both good grapplers. They have less than stellar striker, miserable takedowns, but they're not the same fighter. Felipe is a dog. He continues to pressure forward no matter what comes his way. We saw in Hooper's last fight that if you just stay in his face, you can really put him into some trouble and give him a really hard time. I like Felipe in this fight. I like him a lot. His takedowns are not great, but he does average two per fight. And that's because he just sticks with them. He'll just keep doing it, keep coming forward, keep working for those takedowns. He does have some power in his hands. He'll mix it up in his feet. He doesn't have the best striking, though. I like Felipe to win this fight. Literally, I think the difference is just sheer toughness. Because Chase Hooper is probably the more talented grappler, but his grappling is all tricky stuff. It's all tricky nonsense, hokey-type moves. When we coach wrestling, it's like... When you have eight-year-olds using throws, what are you doing? Those are hokey moves. We're not alligator rolling in a tournament at eight years old. And that's the kind of crap that Chase Hooper does in jujitsu. He's looking for wild leg locks and just nonsense that you shouldn't be looking for in those positions. And he just grappled Hanato Moicano in a grappling competition. And Hanato just blew through him. And that's the difference between traditional, old school. What do you have? You dropped a penny? A, a screw? No, whoa. Jesus. Get your mind out of the gutter, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, Hanato Moicano just worked Chase Hooper in a grappling tournament using traditional jiu-jitsu. Chase is slick, but his moves are a little too, you know, he's not going to beat Felipe. Felipe's the pick. What do you think? 
I know you love Chase Hooper here, so let's hear uh, yeah, it. Yeah, first, first of all, Chase Hooper is one of the toughest son of a bitches you'll ever see in your life because that guy, he's never been put away. He will take shots while he's doing his – you mentioned how the alligator roll. I literally have in my notes listed alligator because if he <laughs> gets a hold of your foot at all, he will just start rolling, just looking for something. And he's one of those BJJ guys that loves leg locks, leg locks, heel hooks. Another one of my favorite guys, Ryan Hall. I, I swear to God, when Ryan Hall retires, I think Chase Hooper – it's going up in his place because he is literally Ryan Hall 2.0. He will try an Iminari roll into leg locks. That's all he is interested in is trying to find your leg and lock your leg down for a heel hook or whatever. Um, but his striking is improving, and he's only 22 years old. So everything he does is going to improve very, very fast. And the way he uses his striking is literally he'll throw a 1-2, and his 2 is actually pretty good. But he throws that thing so hard that he works through it, and that's how he goes for his takedown. So it's 1-2, he throws his 2 with everything, and he goes down with this two to try and get that single leg so he actually does attempt a single leg takedown I agree it's not the greatest thing you've ever seen it's usually a single with a back trip he just tries to fall on you Ryan Hall does not do any of that so at least he's a step above Ryan Hall already at 22 years old he's working with Stephen Thompson in the striking as well and this fight is probably going to end up on the ground. That's where he wants to be. A lot of times he'll even try and pull guard just to get the fight to the ground. But unfortunately, in this situation, this could be a Melissa Gatto situation where she's on her back looking for submissions. And Chase could be the same way, just on his back the entire fight, trying to chase submissions. We saw that in his last fight. Uh, he was basically just trying to chase submissions the entire time. Finally got um, his back with like 30 seconds to go in the third round, but he couldn't get the finish. I could see this doing the exact same thing. Just chase on his back. Looking for submissions, but he's gonna find the submission. Come on, he's Chase Hooper. He's ten and two. I can't. I cannot pick against my guy. It's a hail mary. I wouldn't follow it. It literally is gonna be a submission or bust. But the guy is just so so slick, and Felipe is so aggressive in his takedowns. I just think there's gonna be an opportunity there for Chase. So Felipe is probably the safer play. But I'm going with my man Chase. He finds the submission and gets the win, and he's a candidate for a lot of the week. <laughs> Uh, listen, I, I completely agree. Submission or bust. That's why the bet I, I placed this exact same bet on Chase Hooper last fight too. Wins inside the distance. Decision, no action. I did it last time. I'm gonna do it again. He's plus one fifty, and the bet basically said it, it'll probably be even money. And the bet basically says if Chase Hooper wins inside the distance, submission some, somehow a KO, then I'll oh, get he's got paid. Three TKOs. Chaos oh, okay. Wow, that's outstanding. So 30% of his wins, he is just... Mm. Okay. And if he wins by stoppage, I will get paid. If he loses a decision, which is, to me, the most likely outcome, then I get a refund. Just like Steve Peterson beat him, I got a refund. I got the money back. Bet never happened. I love that bet. I am going to place it on Chase Hooper because he's always live for a submission. And to your point, he is tough. Nobody's questioning his toughness. Uh, tough as shit. I mean, nobody's tougher, than that. nobody's tougher than that guy. I'll tell you that. No, yeah, literally nobody. If you stay in his, Steve Peterson is, if you stay in his face and you, no. you, you can give we him a hard time. got his back taken at the very end. Not Chase Hooper. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Who lost the fight? Anyway, uh, you're only going to get that bet, the win inside a distance decision, no action. If you go to wewantpicks.com slash bets, we have five partners. Bet Online is the one partner that offers that safety net bet. So I love that bet. Listen, DraftKings, are you going to get him at $7,600 for the uh, uh, submission? Yeah, hell yeah, because also we forgot to mention that Felipe is coming up and wait. He's a 135-er. He was a big 135-er, so this might actually help him being you know, as a, a more natural weight. But Chase is a big dude, man. He's six foot two. Felipe is a 5'9", smaller guy. See those long limbs on the ground uh, uh, issues. So, yeah, Chase is going to be in my lineup for sure. Listen, eh, this, maybe when, not. <laughs> Honestly, maybe. Actually, now I think about it, maybe not. But. <laughs> Well, no he problem. definitely – listen, it's it's better for everybody if Chase wins. Like, he's funny. He's popular on social media, got an interesting look, a weird fight style. All of a sudden, he gets some wins. You know, people will love him. So, it's it's better if he wins. And the Imagine UFC's, Chase Hooper versus Ryan Hall. Holy shit. That would be like – like let's watch the You know, w like when the boat, when, when two people are like just sitting, they game. both have leg locks. Like, they're literally both holding each other's ankles. It's just that for three rounds, just staring at each other. Yeah. No and thanks. just rolling. Do, 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 do. That'd be okay. incredible. All right. Uh, Monkey Knife Fight Strike Line, 58 to 70. I do think this goes to a decision. I don't know. You know, the 70 worries me. I think it goes to a decision. I like the more on Chase Hooper. Yeah, red hair. Yeah, Chase Hooper outstruck Steven 102 to 98 that fight. So he, he landed 102 strikes. 
That's because Steven was working takedowns and he was doing pitter patter. But I'm yeah, just, I mean, we're talking about monkey knife fight. No, no, I'm I, just I, saying. I, I, mean, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I, th- I think mean. Chase gets over the 58, 70 for Felipe, but it's probably a more and more because I do think this is a decision, especially if Felipe gets some takedowns, he'll be able to pound away. So, well, I mean, and this could be, yeah, that could be a jump up high too because Chase Hooper gets, I mean, he does get hit. So if Felipe starts hitting Chase, he might say, like, screw the takedowns, I'll just keep hitting them. Yeah. Well, check it out. We own picks.com slash MKF. They will instantly match your deposit up to. You just say more or less in the strikes, and you can triple your money.